Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. It is Friday morning at half past seven and I'm just about to get ready to go for a long-ish run. Today's video, I basically wanted to essentially do running tips in terms of so i'm not i'm not a running coach however i feel like i probably this is why i've been waiting to do this video i feel like i wanted to build up enough experience to be able to talk about different running techniques why i'm running the way that i am running who have i been getting advice off x y and z and i do feel really lucky that i've spoke to a lot of ultra runners or marathon runners in the industry who have been super super helpful because there's so many things if i can ultra like food the process shoes equipment everything like that and i've been really fortunate enough to be able to speak to people about that but like things that i want to talk to you about such as breathing when you're running technique when you're running i, I mean <laughs> technique mine's definitely not 100 percent because i'm built like a more not, I'm not built like a bodybuilder but I'm obviously muscly and I carry that muscle when I'm running so I, I feel quite heavy and uptight when I do run. I try and relax. Some days I'm really relaxed upper body, some days I'm super tight and I can feel it when I run. But the first thing that I wanted to explain to you was actually running aerobically and something called MAF 180. The split is usually 80-20 so 80 aerobic, 20 anaerobic. But it's important to note that there's a lot of people who won't even do much much anaerobic training at all i mean i'm probably one of those people at the moment i've i can tell on my garmin most of the time i don't do that much anaerobic work i don't hit that threshold because i'm training for a 100k ultra and also a hybrid athlete doing a lot of strength training the math 180 formula is where you subtract so take away your age from 180 and that'll be your math 180 heart rate for aerobic runs for example so mine would be 155 if you are recovering from a injury or major illness, subtract an additional 10. So I would subtract 35. When I first started doing math 180 and my heart rate needed to be at 155, we're probably going back about seven or eight weeks that I've been doing it, maybe just over two months. At the start, I felt like I was going really freaking slow. My issue was, if you've been watching my vlogs about the ultra anyway from the start, I needed to slow the fuck down. I was so used to running at pace and I was really struggling to do those distances. Where Whereas now I can go off and do a 40k, be out for 3 hours 45 or whatever and actually feel okay when I stop and when I finish. My average heart rate for those runs now is around 149 to 153 which is chef's kiss it's amazing it feels so much better when i first started doing it it was like 155 156 157 i had to really control it and push it back my aerobic capacity my heart rate has dropped significantly since i've been doing these runs and i found it so beneficial to go further more distance go longer rather than just going balls to the wall on every single run you actually don't want to be doing that you need to train your aerobic capacity to be able to go for a longer period of time with aerobic training specifically it increases the number of capillaries per muscle fiber which also improves how quickly you can deliver oxygen to your working muscles so when you're running how quickly they can clear waste products so lactic acid if you've ever heard of that before oh my god lactic threshold training we used to do when we were swimmers it's literally so painful but you become a lot more efficient so you'll find that your overall training and running will improve when you're doing it you're thinking oh my god i feel like i'm going really slow or this feels like really weird it's really beneficial so the first running tip obviously coming from me is start incorporating more aerobic running math 180 focus less just on pace and going balls wall every single run because you're not going to improve in that way so definitely definitely get in there that aerobic running so i'm off to do a run now and it's going to be based around what i've just spoken to you about so kind of tip number two i guess is shoes what to wear when you're running it's all obviously personal preference in terms of what i'm comfortable in when i'm running i don't have the biggest boobs in the world so running for me has never been a massive issue with a bigger bust it, it i just so i can't relate these sports bras are perfect for me when i'm running they're just like i think they're just the low impact ones on gymshark my gymshark link is below so everything i wear is gymshark if you want to shop it so yeah it has got padding in super comfortable and you can adjust the straps which is great for me because i have quite big shoulders these okay so the weather outside i'm looking literally now and it is raining 
I'm going to throw on the quarter zip. The best thing about the quarter zips is you just don't feel like you get too like ridiculously hot because I always get quite hot when I'm running. So I feel like I don't need that many layers. The best thing you can have is zip it up all the way, it's a bit colder, or you can have it down like I usually do because sometimes I feel like it is choking me. If it's hot, I will wear the speed shorts always. So they have an underline, like an under knicker. And I prefer that than an undershort. I don't agree with an undershort. It just, it rides up when I'm running. I don't like it so just having like an under knicker it's not going to ride up it's just going to stay in the same spot toe socks okay so these are the indinji toe socks and they're awesome but a lot of the time i'll just run in the toe socks if i'm doing distance or i'll just throw on a longer pair of socks that's another point actually between your runs you need to i mean if you are doing quite a lot of running you need to be really really careful of your feet and your toes i at the start wasn't i lost two toenails i'm currently still now losing my right one because of it and i used to get really bad foot pain so between your runs you should be massaging your feet the bottom of your foot icing your feet looking after them your toes and things like that cutting your toenails toenails down so they don't dig into your shoes because that was one of the reasons why like i cut all my feet when I did that marathon. Top tip. Shoes. Going over footwear for running. This is definitely going to be personal preference. I think it is anyway. I've had so many recommendations for different shoes when I'm running. Now, this is the OG pair. As you can see, they're very tattered. And I now have this pair in black, which I think I'm actually going to wear for my ultra. Because I just don't agree with trail shoes. Now, these are the Nike Air Zoom Tempo Next Percent. So these are the shoes that I'm also going to wear this morning. They agree with me. There's some shoes that don't agree with me. Now, these are really, really highly rated and they're Sorkneys. I don't actually know what type of Sorkneys they are. Oh, the Endorph Speed. I really like the shoe. I think they're such a cool shoe. Ben loves them. He can run in them. I just, I don't know what it is. I just don't know what it is. Some shoes just don't agree with you and that is absolutely fine. Okay, so these also didn't agree with me. Maybe I should try them again though. I didn't really give them that much of a trance. So when my hip was really bad, I tried my trail shoes. Now these are the Solomon Ultra Pro. They're literally called the Ultra Pro. You can see the bottom of them. They are in fact a trail shoe. They're very like, they they're very flat footed basically. I need a bit of spring when I run because of my hips. Maybe that's, I just, I need that extra spring. So with discussions with my physio and things like that, I think I will be doing my ultra in my Nikes and just change them along the 100K. This is what I wear for my tempo runs, my speed runs. These are the Nike Air Zoom Alpha Fly Next Percent. Now they're the ones up from the ones that I'm wearing now. And I mean, they are a fast shoe. Don't wear them all the time. I wear them like once a week or occasionally but they are really good. Last shoe is the Hoka Carbon X3. And these are a really, really good shoe. They make me feel quite slow when I'm running and I don't know if that's just a psychological thing. These are the running and lifting shoe though, so they're a combination shoe. Whereas Ben has the Hoka Clifton Edge and they're a fantastic running shoe. Yeah, I do like slow, steady runs in those, but I will always fall back into the nights. Like I think what you need to remember is what suits me might not suit you and what suits someone else and reviews and things like that. Sometimes it is about like testing a few and just seeing what works well because i've always drifted back to the nikes i'm gonna go and do a steady run then i'm probably gonna explain to you a little bit about like variations of running so obviously you have intervals you have tempo speed which is kind of the mixture of the two you have long runs aerobic runs trail and a lot to go off so guys, there's two things I've got to explain before I leave for the run. So this is questioned so much in terms of what it is. This is a free train vest and it holds your phone, it holds your keys. It's just simply basically that. Oakley sunglasses. I actually don't know what the style is called. And then this is my running pack. So this is more where I will hold. So this is for my long runs. I have two water packets. I have loads of pockets, two at the front. One here is like a zip. And then I have the back one, which is more full as well, which you can fit different things in you can hook stuff onto it which i'm assuming for my ultra i'm going to be hooking on something it fits me really well it's quite snug but these these absolutely aren't essential but if you don't want to have your phone on your arm or you don't want to hold your phone this is really beneficial and when you pull it down you can see your phone screen here i mean they are really really good me and ben have used them for so long and i think they're a really really good product so heart rate's at 132 when you are running one of the really important things to think about is your breathing 
in through the nose, out through the mouth. I think the thing is, if you get stitch, it's twice through the nose, once out through the mouth. But it is an integral part of your running because if you can control your breathing, you can control your heart rate better. I found a new place to run, pretty nice. Don't know where I'm going, but I always make sure I run with my phone. Do they ever get lost? Not that I ever really have. I know how to get back. I've also got a map on my Garmin in case my phone dies. Yeah, I mean, you've got to mix it up a bit, haven't you? You've got to keep it a little bit interesting. Average heart rate is 134. Really quite low. Only 3k in though. I'm 8k in. My heart rate is 145. Really chilled. Feeling really relaxed. Controlling my breathing. So I just hit 14k. Yesterday I did a tempo like speed fast 14k and hit a pb so it's a nine minute difference from staying yesterday it just shows how different some runs can be heart rate's at 149 so it's gone up a little bit not a lot but i think i'm going to do around 18k just because i've got my gym session to get to as well i set off a little bit late this morning done and dusted 18k one hour 32 5 10 pace yeah, see, just aerobic, not at all hitting anaerobic there because my heart rate was pretty low. I'll see if my heart rate pops up. If not, I'll just have to put it on the screen. No, I'll put my heart rate on the screen. Hello, everybody. I am showered, changed. Oh, whoa, you nearly fell. It was really good. I can't believe my heart rate was like 146 average. That is stunning for me, really stunning. Okay, now I wanted to talk to you about intervals, speed training, tempos, I guess like the mixture of training. So I've already been over aerobic training and the benefits of that and why you should be doing it as well as a different variety of runs. Now I used to just literally just like bomb 10 and 15 Ks, like just go really fast all the time and I wasn't really improving. And it's all I was really doing. Now, obviously my training is quite different because I'm training for an ultra and it's a very, very long distance but i just wanted to go over the benefits of intervals and speed training interval training essentially works your anaerobic and your aerobic system which when you're doing it for longer periods of time so you practice intervals your pace and the speed of your running is going to improve as your muscles work harder during exercise, so training, running, you produce something called lactic acid. If you're working at a comfortable pace, so aerobically, it's quite easy for your body to flush out the lactic acid and you don't actually feel that bad. But when you are working harder, the lactic acid builds up, the fatigue builds up, the muscle ache builds up. And this is your lactate threshold. I mean, you have to work hard to get here. It's not just kind of a hard pace. You're literally pushing it when you're doing intervals, when you're doing hard work to reach lactate threshold. I've researched into interval training quite a lot and before I started doing it, I had a lot of advice off people who are marathon runners, who are half marathon runners, who do interval training. Now, one of the things that I did actually want to read out to you in terms of one of the benefits of interval training, the body responds to interval training by growing extra capillaries to transport more oxygen to the muscles, including the heart, which I already spoke about at the start anyway with your aerobic training. And this will improve the efficiency of oxygen delivery. Now, importantly here with the intervals, it's the improved cardiovascular system, so how well your heart is working. And then this is combined with being able to essentially cope better with lactic acid buildup. Essentially, over time, you're going to be able to run at a faster pace for pace? a faster pace, you're going to feel stronger for longer periods of time. Now, interval training is really tough. It can be super, super hard. With the My Coach School app, we have two different running hybrid programs on there. So running and lifting programs, definitely go and check it out. Use the discount code I put on the screen and you can get 50% off your first month. I only share that on YouTube because you guys are super special and you deserve to have some discount. It is on the screen, the Build and Run programs, and they have interval training in. So one of the sessions, for example, is a 40 minute run, or I think we have 30 ones as well. So say for a 30 minute run, you could do 10 minutes easy where you're keeping your heart rate nice and low, just like a warm up, and then do 10 minutes as one minute hard, one minute easy. And that hard, you are literally going for it. Like you're going so freaking fast, you're getting that heart rate up, you're building the lactic acid up, and then you go one minute easy, or you could walk, and then do 10 minutes recovery run at the end. Now, intervals are short periods of time. They're shorter runs. The one thing that I have stopped doing for my training is interval runs 
runs and I do more so tempo runs. This is a type of training which is maximal steady state training. Now I stopped doing intervals because when I was going hard on these one minute periods it was just triggering something, triggering something in my hip and I just don't know what the fuck it was. I decided to start doing more tempo runs because one I don't really, for me personally in the moment, because I'm training for 100K, don't really need to be doing that many short interval bursts. It's not massively as beneficial for me because I'm not gonna be running at pace. However, the tempo runs, so yesterday I did a 14K tempo run, the week before I did 12, week before that I did 12 and 10. So I've built it up and I'll build it up to probably like 16K. I am going pretty damn hard on these with an RP of seven. My pace yesterday was 4.27 for 14K. It was actually a PB. I mean, because I'm not used to doing it, they are actually quite fast runs and they're really, really challenging for me. I find them challenging and as a mental attitude for me, I think they're, a, they're more beneficial because I know I'm going to hit peaks and troughs in my ultra and those troughs when I'm feeling super, super low and feel like I can't carry on. That's where that mental attitude of doing those tempo runs and how hard they, they get will be beneficial. So yeah, tempo runs speed and interval runs, aerobic runs, variety, trail runs. There's so many different sorts. And I just really wanted to put kind of everything that I've personally learned into this video. I'll also link a podcast below that we did with Zach Bitter. Now he held the world record for 100 miles. He is a phenomenal runner. It's insane. And he's a running coach. So I'll link that podcast below. We did a podcast with him. It was awesome. And yeah, I just hope you enjoyed this video. It's a bit more insightful into running. I'm definitely not an expert, but I feel like I've got enough experience experience now to be able to tell you things that I found beneficial, things that work for me and things like that. Hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in my next one.